Dear students, we have already learned about main memory and mass storages. From today, we will learn that how actually the real-time data is stored in computer. So, as we have already discussed in previous modules, that computer can only understand the binary language. That is the language of zeros and one. So, how, for example, a letter in the real data, for example, a word hello, how the word hello can be stored internally in computer. So, we will try to learn this concept in today's module. So, initially, we have thought that each textual symbol should be represented with a unique bit pattern. So, you, we have number of zeros and ones. So, for example, we can say that 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, this will be A. I am just giving an example. So, such a unique pattern will be used to represent one symbol. And there would be number of such symbols available in the world. And for each symbol, we will design a unique bit pattern. That would be normally of 8 bits. So, if we want to store virtual university, so V would be stored in 8 bits, I would be stored in 8 bits and so on. So, we have 18 characters in virtual university, including the space in between them. Space is also treated as a character. So, we would need 144 bits to store the word virtual university. Or you can say we would need 18 bytes to store virtual university internally. So, how such codes were developed? In 1940s and 1950s, many such codes were developed by different scientists of the world. And then, there is authority known as American National Standard Institute, ANSI, that has formed American Standards Code for Information Interchange, that is called ASCII, and that is pronounced as ASCII. So, that ASCII had seven bits for information representation and most significant bit was just zero. So, if we have seven bits, you have learned in the previous modules that if we have seven bits, we can form two raised to power seven combinations, which are 128. So, this means 128 different kind of symbols could be represented as we have 128 different kind of patterns. So, those 128 symbols would be uppercase, alphabets, lowercase, punctuations, marks, digits from 0 to 9, line feed, carriage return and taps. So, line feed means you want to say that here is a next line symbol should be inserted. And carriage return means that you want to return your carriage or you turn your cursor to the start of your line. And tab, you know, it's available on your keyboard. So, if we want to see the ASCII codes which are available in your book, so let's go on to page number 577 of your book and see what are those ASCII codes which are available there. So, here I have opened this 577 number page, which is Appendix A of your book. And here, these are the symbols. And this is the hexa value. So, you already have learned that four things are joined together to form one symbol in hexadecimal. So, these are eight. So, this means that this would be translated to two hexadecimal symbols. So, we have line feed, carriage return, space, for example, for space you have this symbol and so on. And you can also translate these symbols into their actual decimal places. So, for example, the space will have 32 in the decimal uh, system and then zeros to 9, then from A to Z, these are the upper cases and then there are the lower cases. So, these are 128 symbols and for each symbol there is a ASCII value. 
and that ascii value is being used by the computers who are using ascii codes so for example from this appendix a from your book so you have learned that if we want to store hello full stop so i have picked the ascii value of h from your book and then the ascii value of e from your book and then the ascii value of l l o n point so actually on back end side these values will represent hello so ascii codes had some limitations as well so there there are not 128 characters in the world so in the world there are many many more characters available so international organization for standardization which is also called as iso that has come up with many extensions to ascii codes so one for to support a one western language and another to support another um, language but it has also issues for example if we even take 256 letters so these are still insufficient to donate all language symbols so in actually in the world there are many many symbols available and document having multiple languages could not be read as it should follow a one standard so as i mentioned that iso had defined different patterns for different western symbols so if one document has multiple patterns then that document cannot be read so it should be internationalized so it was internationalized using unique patterns of 21 bits and those are called unicodes and these are compliance with AS ascii compliant with ascii means that all of the symbols which ascii use those remained as it is in the unicodes and unicode further defined more symbols but with the 21 so it has now a large space of 2 raised to power 21 symbols to represent all of the chinese harbu japanese and other languages so utf8 has 24 or 32 bits so if we only take 24 bits it can represent 16 million of unique symbols and file consisting of long symbols encoded with ascii or unicode is normally called a text file so if we summarize today's module that we have learned that how text is actually represented within the computer using binary and what are ascii and unicodes and how they have made our life easier to store data on the computer